again, my friends. This is Sickle Yield, and today I'm going to show you how to split a body morph. Now, presently, head and body morphs usually come separated, and then they will be joined with a controller to dial them in both simultaneously. But if you want to use a clone as a morph, for example, those usually come as one piece. So right now I'm going to take, for example, the Genesis 8 male morph, because I tested this earlier with the G8F1. So as you can see, I dial that in. It's the head and the body together, and you can't use them separately. So this procedure that I'm going to show you should work with any of the figures that are weight mapped from Genesis 1 up through G9 here. So first of all, you can see that I have deleted all of the conformers from Genesis 9 here in the scene tab, the eyes, the mouth, the eyelashes, etc. You need to delete all of those. Then I'm going to go to the parameters tab. And I'm going to go up here to the settings button at top left of the tab, click on that and choose preferences, show hidden properties. This allows me to see my clones. If you can't see the clones, it's probably because you don't have that on. So I'm going to turn off G8M there for a minute. And I'm going to go to mesh resolution in parameters. And I'm going to set it to base resolution and sub D zero. Very important. Won't work if you don't do this. And I'm going to go to currently used. This is also very important. And I'm going to set to zero the dials eye resting focal point mouth realism, and navel HD. It's important that you turn those off because this is going to be our clean base for export. So now I'm going to go File, Export, and it's going to let me choose a place to export. And I've already created a file folder in my Blender content area. So I'm going to call this G8M clone. I have my own preset that I've created. You can use the Daz Studio one, you can use the Poser one. Um, the one that I'm using started out as, I started at the Daz Studio one and looked at that and then I figured out the conversion. So um, to export to roughly Blender scale, I set up a custom preset that is 1% scale. And then I didn't change anything else, I don't think. So I'm going to click Accept. Now I'm going to open Blender. There's our default cube. I'm just going to left click on that to select it and hit Delete. And then I'm going to go File and Import, Wavefront. And I'm going to import that file called G8M clone, which is a mistake. It's not actually the G8M clone, it's the G9 base. But there it is. You can see it's small enough now that it's smaller than the Blender camera. It's smaller than the Blender light. It's about the right size for Blender. Scaling, again, is pretty subjective, and that's just what I'm working with right now. I've actually changed the scaling I used twice over my career so far. I started out using Poser Scaling, which was smaller than Blender Scaling. And for a while, I used Daz Studio Scaling, which is larger than Blender Scaling. That's a small digression. But I've got this selected with left click. You can see the orange halo around it. And I'm going to go over here to the Object Data Properties panel, which is a little green triangle. And I'm going to delete all of the vertex groups. So what I'm going to do is select the bottom one here in the Vertex Groups panel. And I'm going to click the little minus sign repeatedly until all of the vertex groups go away. If we were doing something involving the rigging of G9, I wouldn't do this. But we need these gone for this specific procedure. Now that that's done, I'm going to save this, and I'm going to call it Morph Splitter. OK, minimizing that, back to Daz Studio. Now it's time to export our morph we want to split. So I'm going to go back to my clones, which are visible here, and dial in Genesis 8 Mail. Go back to currently used and make sure that I'm at base resolution, don't have the navel and mouth morphs on, etc. And then I'm going to export again. And since I already imported that G9 base, I'm just going to overwrite the word I wrote there, G8M clone. Same scale, needs to be at the same scale. Now I can go back to Blender, unselect that by left clicking anywhere, and File, Import, Wavefront again. A quick note on my presets here. I use an operator preset I created, but all it really does here is keep vertex order and check polygroups. So that's what's going on there. OK, shade smooth. 
Here is my G8M. Now right away you can notice that G8M is much taller than G9. This is going to create a real problem if we don't do something about it before we do the rest of this. So first of all, I'm going to hit S and scale that down until it matches roughly the height of G9. With the female version, I also had to scale her horizontally because she looked too wide when I scaled down her height. But right now, this looks about right. It's important that they be about the same height or we're gonna have a serious distortion problem. You can see I line up the eye sockets there as much as possible, just like that, okay? So now I want to, I have G8M here selected. So I'm going to hold down shift and click to select also the G9 base. So it's important that you select the G8 one first and then the G9 one, the one you want to become a morph and the one that is the base. Then I'm going to go over to the shape keys panel and I'm going to hit plus, that creates a basis. And then I'm gonna hit plus again to create key one. And then I'm going to this little po downward pointing arrow to the right here called shape key specials. And I'm going to choose join as shapes. And now you can see that it's created a morph. I didn't need key one there, oops. It's created a morph that essentially is that shape. So I can dial that in and there's my G8 clone on G9. As you can see, it didn't preserve the scaling I created because it was in object mode. So we're still gonna have to fix that. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode with that shape key selected. And hang on, with that dialed off, you can see here's the line where the top of the head should go right here. I'm circling it with my mouse. So I'm going to scale down. You can see that it wants to scale up from the feet. So to not do that, I'm gonna go up here to the very top of the screen on the transform pivot point, little button there, and click on 3D cursor. And then I'm going to hit scale. It will scale from the bottom of the screen there. So I'm just going to scale down until his head is right at that line. So the eyes should pretty much match up there. And then uh, he does look a little wide now. So I am going to S and then X and scale him inwards until his proportions look right to me. Just like that. Okay. So now, summing up what we've done so far, we exported the G8, sorry, we exported the G9 base to OBJ, and we exported the G8M clone to OBJ. We brought the G8M clone and the G9 base into Blender, and we made that clone into a morph or a shape key of G9 here in Blender. That's where we need to start. Okay, now I have dialed in that G8M clone I'm going to go to the Shape Key Specials drop down, click on it, and choose New Shape from Mix. Now I have Key 2, which if I dial down the G8M clone, I can see is just that same thing. It's another copy of it. That's important. So I'm going to name this top one G8M Head, and this bottom one G8M Body. And these are going to be our body and our head morph. And the way we're going to separate those is that we're going to sort of cull out the head or the body on each one. So in order to do that, I need to create two vertex groups. It'll be one for the body and one for the head. So up top, group one is going to be head, and group two is going to be body. And down here in the shape keys, if I have a shape key selected, head in this case, you can see that down here I can choose a vertex group and there's a drop down. So I'm going to assign the head one to the head and the body one to the body. And then I'm going to go up here to the vertex groups. And with this selected, I'm going to make sure that I also have the G8M head selected, dial that in. I'm going to hit tab to go to edit mode. And um, that was me hitting three to change the view and shift Z to change to wireframe. Shift Z changes to and from wireframe in the present version, I think. And then 
I'm going to hit C to create a selection circle. And most morphs now involve not just the head, but also much of the neck. So I'm going to select a bunch of the neck here. This isn't this is very subjective, and you may actually need to make different versions of this for different morphs, depending on how much of the head and neck they affect. But for the present, I'm going to go up here to the top of the screen and click on Select Mode to Face Select. Makes it easier to cleanly select lines or rings of vertices here, of faces. So I'm going to go up here to Vertex Group's head, and you can see the weight right now is set to 1. So I'm going to click Assign. Then I'm going to select Invert or Control-I. That selects the body. And I'm going to go down to the Vertex Group that says Body and assign that at a weight of 1. So now you can see that if I dial in the head and body here, they do look like the G8M head and body, but now there's a weird split there in the middle where those two vertex groups meet. So what we're going to do now, and this is also kind of a tricky part, is we're going to smooth out those areas. And I'm going to do that in the weight paint mode. So with the G8M head selected and the head vertex group selected, I'm going up here to object mode and selecting weight paint. There you can see there's a pretty sharp cutoff at the edge of the neck. So what I'm going to do is set weight to 0.5 and I'm going to draw around this neck area with 0.5 here. And you can see that doesn't look symmetrical, so actually I'm going to control Z that till that goes away. I'm going to go to my active tool and workspace settings over here on the right. It's at the top and it looks like a little wrench and screwdriver. And I'm going to go down here to symmetry and hit X so that now when I paint to 50%, it does it to both sides evenly. There we go. And I'm going to do that same thing, clicking on the body vertex group. I'm going to click that and do around 50% to this middle area. And they're going to overlap, and that's all right. And then when I've done that, on each of those, I'm also going to go up to Weights and Smooth. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. And I'm going to do that on both the body and the head. You can see that the head one looks a little different now because of the addition of the body one. So now, when I go back to Object Mode, there's a smoother transition between those two. And again, that's a little subjective, and you're going to have to probably play with that on your own a little. You can see I've still got a bump in the back of the neck here that I need to fix. I think that's on the head one, so let's check. Let's try that. OK. And I'm going to smooth that again. Our weight group smoothing does cover a multitude of sins, but it can't do everything. So some of it is going to be down to experimenting with the painting. All right, that's that's good enough for now. Hmm, I've still got a bump there. Let's uh, let's try and smooth it out on the body. I see. Let's try painting that to 0.25 on the body. Nope. It's at 1. 0.25. There we go. I do occasionally get complaints about my production or my sound quality. But the thing is, there's a point at which I have to decide between making a better sounding production or actually getting all of the information to you. And I've chosen in favor of the information because I may sound ugly, but at least the tutorial is there for you to have instead of me spending hours on the production and doing a tutorial of something simple like here's how to select something in Daz Studio that you don't really need because you already know it. Okay. I'm going to stop there. There's still a little bump in the neck that I'm not thrilled with, but this will do for right now for tutorial purposes. So here's our G8M, and we have our head group and our body group. So right now I'm going to turn off the head one, 
and I'm going to make sure I have this selected and I'm going to export to OBJ again. And now I'm going to give it a name that fits the new naming convention for Genesis 9 morph. So in this case, because it's a body morph, it's going to be called split morph underscore body underscore BS for blend shape and then underscore G8M head. Split morph is like a product name in this case. So we put the product name at the very beginning, if that's what we're doing. If we're doing a product that's separate from Daz products, which, you know, I always am because I'm a Daz artist. I don't work for them in-house as such. So here we go. Split morph body BS g 8 head. Except it's not the head, it's the body. So it'll be g 8 body. And there we go. My export preset here, quick note on that. I have selection only, OBJ objects. Didn't change anything in the transform, I don't think. Under geometry, I have apply modifiers, write normals, include UVs, write materials, polygroups, and keep vertex order checked, and the other four things here unchecked. And then you can create a export preset up here under operator presets by hitting this plus sign. Okay, I'm gonna hit export OBJ. I'm going to go back to Daz Studio. There's my Genesis 9 in all of its stubby glory. And I'm going to import with through Morph Loader Pro, which looks like a little flexing arm with a P on it on your panel there. I hit Choose More Files, and I navigated to the OBJ. There it is. Now I need to choose a property group. So in this case, the property group will be Actor, Full Body, People, masculine. We don't have male and female for G9. We have feminine and masculine because the figure itself is androgynous. So there's that, and I'm going to hit accept. And now under full body people masculine, there is my split morph. So I'm going to give it a tag name that's easier to read, which will in this case be Genesis 8 male body. And I'm going to set the limit to 0 to 100. There we go. Now I can, if I wish, dial that in. And I'm just going to repeat that procedure to export the head morph from Blender. Turn off the body, turn on the head. Make sure it's to OBJ, wave front. And then I'll again, I've got Morph Loader Pro here. I click to choose more files. Now I can navigate to my G8M head and right click where it says Morph, Morph Loader and go to Actor, Head, People, and Masculine. And then I'm just going to click Accept. And now when I go to Actor, Head, People, Masculine, there's the head morph. And I'm going to do it again where I'm going to change the label to Genesis 8 male head and limit to zero. And now I can dial in the head. I can dial in the body. Now I have Genesis 8 male. So there's a difference here, which I'm going to import a Genesis 8 male into my scene. And you can see he's quite a bit taller. So on Genesis 9, first of all, I'm going to go to currently used and turn off my head morph. And I'm going to scale the body up to the height of Genesis 9 to correct for what we had to do in Blender. So I'm going to get him to, let's see, how big did I get him? About 106 looks like, about 106%. Nope, 106.5, 106.6. Thereabouts. Okay. Now G9 is about the right height. So I'm going to delete G8M and I'm going to do my bone adjustment. So I clicked on this thing up here that looks like a bone with a pencil over it. And I'm going to right click and edit adjust rigging to shape. In the first case, I'm going to leave ad adjust orientation turned off. I'm going to do this in two steps, because if I do it in one step, it will break the bones of the head area and the hands. So I'm going to do that first. 
and then I'm going to do it again, edit, adjust rigging to shape. This time I'm going to right click and choose uncheck all. And then I'm going to right click on the pelvis and choose check selected in children. And then I'm going to manually check spine one, two, three, four, um, and the arm bones up to the hand, not the hand themselves. Like I really don't want to do anything to the hand area with orientation if I can avoid it because it will get broken and it will not bend properly. So with those selected, not the head, not the hands, but everything else, I'm going to click Adjust Orientation at the bottom of this Adjust Rig dialog and click Accept. Now you can see it's adjusted those a little bit so that they'll bend better. And then I can go to my parameters to Genesis 8 male body, right click and choose ERC Freeze. Now this freeze dialog that pops up shows a list of the changes it will keep as part of the morph. And you can see they say things like Z end, Y origin, those are movements of bones. I'm gonna go down to the bottom here and scale is part of that too. So it says scale Genesis 9 and it's going to scale Genesis 9 when we dial in the morph, which is perfect. That's just what we want. I'm gonna leave these additional options as they are and click accept. And it may take a minute the more bones that are affected, the longer it takes to do the ERC freeze. Then I can dial the body up and down and you can see that the bones move with it and the height moves with it, just as we wish. So then I need to do the bone adjustment for the head separately. So I'll dial in the Genesis 8 male head. I will go to edit, adjust rigging to shape. And I'm going to uncheck all, right click uncheck all. And then I'm going to find the head and choose right. I'm going to right click on it and choose check selected in children, leave adjust orientation off and click accept. And it adjusts the bones to the size and shape of the head. Then I'll go back to the morph, right click and choose ERC freeze. If you don't see that option, you may need to right click on the morph and click on the word edit mode first. Then you click ERC freeze. Okay, no big scaling on this one clicking accept. So now I've got my Genesis 8 male head and my Genesis 8 male body and I can dial those in separately and they go together. There's still that little tiny bump on the back of the neck I'm not thrilled with but some fiddling will probably fix that and we did get this done. So I'm going to hit control shift F to zero everything and I'm going to save that. Before I save that, here in DAZ Studio Formats, I'm going to right click and choose Add a Base Directory. And I've created a directory called G8 Split Morphs. This can be pretty much anywhere on your computer. Um, you click on that and click Select Folder. And now under your DAZ Studio Formats dropdown, you can see this directory called G8 Split Morphs. It's a good idea to have different directories for different sets. like. I have a DAZ 3D directory that only DAZ purchase products are in. You can see I've got a couple products I'm working on here. Um, those aren't under NDA because they don't have to do with DAZ's in-house morphs. I've got a Genesis 9 official only directory. I've got one for things I bought from Renderosity. I keep all these different directories separate from each other because it makes things easier to install and uninstall. So here's our G8 split morphs directory. And I'm going to go to File, Save As, Support Asset, morph asset. And this is very important. At the top of the morph asset, morph asset, sorry, save options where it says asset directory, I'm going to click that drop down and choose split morphs, the directory we just created. I'm going to change it to sickle yield 2023 and the product name just be split morphs for now. Under Genesis 9, then I will go to where I saved or uploaded those other morphs full body, people, masculine, Genesis 8 male body, and head, people, masculine, Genesis 8 male head. I'm going to leave them uncompressed for now. Compressing them makes the file size smaller. Sometimes I leave things uncompressed so that I can text edit later if I need to. That's an entirely different subject for a different day. But for now, I'm going to click accept. So then I'll delete G9 from my scene and load it again. And if things were saved properly, now I should have, yep, there's my G8 body and my G8 head. Okay, now I'm going to give you an example of what we might want to use a split clone for. For example, I've got Genesis 8 male in my scene with Genesis 9. 
on Genesis 8 Mail. I'm going to favorite a morph that this will be like a twice copied morph now because I copied the Gianni 7 body onto Genesis 8. So I'm going to go to that and right click and favorites and add selected property to favorites. And then I'm going to start transfer utility. It looks like an arrow pointing upward to the right on your interface. So in the transfer utility for source, I'm going to choose Genesis 8 mail. And for target, I will choose Genesis 9. And under the target drop down here, where for item shape, I will choose clone, Genesis 8 mail, and accept. Then I'm going to click show options, very important. And I'm going to unclick everything except for morph targets. Under that, I'm going to choose favorites. I don't want to copy every single morph on Genesis 8. That would take a long time. Then I'm going to uncheck fit to source figure and parent to source figure and click accept. Now I can remove Genesis 8 from the scene. On Genesis 9 now, under full body, I've got FBM Gianni 7. I will do a little work up here on that to change the name to just Gianni 7 body. And set the limits to 0 and 100. There we go. And I dial that in. Now you will notice that it does not look like Gianni 7 on G8 because Genesis 9 does not look like Genesis 8. But what I can do now is go to my full body and masculine and dial in that Genesis 8 body. And now it looks like Gianni 8 looked on Genesis 8. And if I do that with my Genesis 2 body, I will get a much closer look to what Gianni looked like on Genesis 2 and so forth. So by turning your clones into these separated morphs, you can then get body and head morphs from other figures to look more like they look on those figures. And you can even control the degree to which that is the case. So if I want to create a dial of that, I can even see I've got Gianni 7 body and Genesis 8 male body dialed in. I can go to the Property Hierarchy tab. You can create one if you don't have one by right-clicking in the tab area and add Pane tab. And I'll right-click there and choose ERC Freeze. Then I can choose Genesis 9 from the drop-down and create new. And the new thing I'm going to call Control G8 Gianni 7. And for a label, I'm going to call it Gianni 7 for G8. And then I'll put that controller under actor, full body, people, masculine. Turn on auto follow, set it to modifier shape under type. And then I'm going to set the minimum to zero and click accept. And here you can see it's going to freeze those two body morphs. So I'll just click accept. And now control shift F. If I go to actor, full body, people, masculine, now I have a dial called Gianni 7 for G8. And when I dial that in, it dials in both. Let me go to currently use so you can see it dials in both Gianni 7 body and Genesis 8 male body. So this gives you a lot more options for using morphs from other figures. That's about all for now. Thank you for watching and happy rendering.